friends. Welcome to the We Are Marketing Happy podcast, a healthcare marketing podcast where we focus and talk about the technology and innovation that helps improve patients' access to care. Today, I am super excited because I'm joined by Bonnie and Lee Gilmore. She is the uh, Vice President of Strategy and Communications of Planned Parenthood of the St. Louis and Southeast Missouri region. So welcome, Bonnie, and I'm so happy to have you on today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. So let's jump right into the question that I'm sure everybody's interested in hearing about. Stands have been shifting underneath you and the work that you're doing continuously this year, especially since the most recent Supreme Court ruling. I think what I'd love to do to start off is just talk a little bit about fact versus fiction. There's so much misinformation and uncertainty out there right now for patients as far as understanding what is and isn't accessible from a birth control perspective, what is and isn't accessible if they live in a red state, you know, or an accessible state, lay it out for us. Yeah, thank you for that question, because when whenever there's big news around sexual and reproductive health care, particularly around abortion access, there's a lot of misinformation that swirls. So the fact is today, unfortunately, because of the Dobbs v. Jackson case, abortion is illegal in the state of Missouri. However, one misinformation we saw circulate pretty quickly after that decision dropped was that birth control and emergency contraception and IVF are now outlawed. That is untrue. Birth control, emergency contraception, IVF, these uh, reproductive health care uh, options are still legal in the state of Missouri. And they were legal before Roe was overturned and they're legal after Roe was overturned. Now, is that to say that the politicians aren't gonna go after birth control next? Of course not. We already know that politicians in Missouri and several other states are already taking aim at birth control. And we know that's probably next on the chopping block. But for now, it remains legal. It remains accessible in the state of Missouri. Birth control and emergency contraception prevent pregnancy, as you know, and this is oftentimes purposely conflated by anti-abortion politicians to suggest that they somehow end pregnancies. They don't. They prevent pregnancies, they are safe, and they are legal in the state. So we have listeners from all across the country. So do you have any resources or places online that you'd recommend folks go to be able to understand what they can and can't access within their own states? Yeah, so abortionfinder.org is a really handy tool for people to understand uh, particularly how to navigate your way to abortion care if you live in a banned state. There's also the Regional Logistics Center uh, work that we do. You can go to ppslr.org and read about the Regional Logistics Center, which is a case management patient navigation program that we launched at our Illinois Health Center As folks may or may not know, Illinois is a critical access state right now. It is an island. Almost every state around it has either banned abortion or has extremely draconian restrictions in place. And in the next year, we will see about 14,000 additional patients coming from outside of Illinois access abortion in Southern Illinois. And so the Regional Logistics Center takes care of travel. It takes care of lodging. It connects patients with financial aid resources and really arranges that wraparound care that is now so critical in the work to ensure abortion access. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I'm such a big fan of the RLC uh, and the work that y'all are doing. Very proud of it. Yeah, yeah, you should be. It's phenomenal. Definitely going to change a bunch of lives. So let's talk about, it is very difficult to be in your space to actually have abortion care be one of the many things that you promote. As we know, Planned Parenthood actually does a lot of phenomenal things outside of abortion care. But how do you stay up to date as the stands are shifting underneath you about even legally what you can and can't promote and what you can and can't do? I mean, it's a maze, especially, you know, as, you know, your region, uh, you know, you have so many states right here. And then I know a bunch of other Planned Parenthood affiliates also have multi-state regions. How do you stay up to date? We have really excellent lawyers. <laughs> Anybody who works in the healthcare field knows, right? We can't mm-hmm. operate without our lawyers breathing down our necks every day. And, you know, we are really adept at blending the healthcare work and the advocacy of healthcare work. You know, healthcare shouldn't 
and isn't a political issue. Yeah. It shouldn't yeah. be. But the reality is, is that anti-reproductive health care politicians are forcing it into a political space where it's quite frankly unreasonable to be talking about healthcare provisions with non-healthcare providers, but mm -hmm. that's our reality, right? And there are tons of medically unnecessary restrictions targeted at people who need reproductive healthcare. Reproductive capable people are discriminated against and targeted at rates that we male-bodied patients don't mm -hmm. necessarily see or experience. In this time, I'll give you a really good example. Our, our organization has an advanced GYN program where we offer vasectomies and tubal ligations. And we've seen sterilization requests go through the roof since mm -hmm. Roe was overturned. And what we're also seeing is a ton of patients who live in rural Missouri who are getting turned away for this care by their doctors yeah. because yeah. their doctors want to make paternalistic decisions for them about if they're ready to stop having more kids or if they they're ready to make a decision about not having kids. Mm -hmm. And so the layers of restrictions and discrimination are real and don't just pertain to abortion care, they pertain to the full spectrum of sexual and reproductive health care. Mm -hmm. There's actually I'm in a variety of women's groups online. There's actually a couple of underground spreadsheets going around of OBs who were willing to do sterilization procedures regardless of your age or the number of children that you have. And it is kind of crazy that we live in a world where you have to have a spreadsheet with OBs that are willing to do that. You know, I, I just truly don't even understand why it has to be an underground issue, right? Mm -hmm. The Black women who established the reproductive justice framework really solidified the idea that every person should have the right to decide whether they want to have a kid, not yeah. to have a kid, and to raise the kids they have in safety. And this should be every person's right to decide without any sort of judgment from anyone yeah. other than that person in their family. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit, because I know you have a team that manages digital for you, but I know that Meta and Google have made all of these decisions around what they do and don't allow on the platform. How have you been managing and pivoting that? And are there any, uh, you know, trends or things that you've seen specifically with these platforms? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tell the audience that Jenny did not pay me to say this, but your <laughs> team helps us tremendously because we are reproductive healthcare experts, but we are not digital marketing experts. So I couldn't do it without the Anvil team. You did not pay me to say that, but you I did not. Shout out. <laughs> you deserve the shout out. Um, oh, thank you. Some of the trends we're seeing are troubling, right? The, there's a difference between intention and impact. And I think a lot of these platforms in the age of misinformation have really tried to crack down on the flow of misinformation on their platforms. But as a result, they've instituted some really arbitrary rules that I know your team has to navigate all the time for us. Like when the word abortion is in an ad and then it gets shut down because whatever algorithms and policies that these digital platforms have put in place. And it's really unfortunate. The other, the other trend we're seeing is, and this is a trend that's been happening over many years, crisis pregnancy centers are fake clinics run by anti-abortion operatives. And they disguise themselves as reproductive healthcare providers and centers, and they lure patients in and then hold them there. So they miss their appointments at Planned Parenthood or other abortion providers. And they really shame and stigmatize patients in their spaces. If you live in the St. Louis area, Thrive is a really well-known one, but there are thousands of them across the country. And they oftentimes get tax dollars to subsidize their digital marketing. And we see this all the time, and it takes an enormous amount of money and work on our behalf to be able to knock them down in those mm -hmm. Google searches that digital marketing experts will know way more about than I do. But this is a problem, right? Because they are subsidized by many state governments in order to push their misinformation. And they're able to do, they're able to, you know, go through the loopholes and spend millions of dollars to be the top search uh, result. Yep. 
Well, and an article just came out today, the day that we're filming, talking about how additional legislation is now being pushed in a variety of states that actually could hold Meta and or Google culpable for ads served on their platform legally around not only abortion, but certain birth controls or, you know, other things that are deemed inappropriate in the legislators' minds. So I think we're facing a pretty rocky road over the next couple of years. So. Yeah, absolutely. And some blurred lines of Mm -hmm. uh, and complicated conversations around freedom of speech. Yep, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. So Ted, let's talk a little bit more and let's end on, I think one of the things that I I love that you're doing is the brands against bands. Talk a little bit about that. We're so proud of this new campaign we're launching in August called Brands Against Bands. And it is an effort to empower businesses to utilize their brands to support sexual and reproductive health care. So we know one of the biggest challenges and what got us here to this moment of Roe being overturned is stigma. Yeah. People want to whisper the word abortion. We know the majority of Americans and voters in this country support keeping Roe and support abortion access, yet we don't hear it enough. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember that the anti-abortion groups are a loud minority of people that has led many to believe that abortion should remain in silence and it shouldn't. And so the Brands Against Bans campaign is really our effort to empower businesses to get loud on their support for sexual and reproductive health care and rights. And we are working with businesses to start a list of preferred businesses that we can share out with our supporters. So if you want to know where you can go holiday shopping and support your mission and values, we are working on that list. If you're looking for vendors that support your values, we will have that list. So we're starting that in August and we're really proud of it. And Jenny, you're an example of this. So, you know, being a woman owned business and being really out front on your support for sexual and reproductive health care does wonders to shatter stigma. And it's incredibly important at this time to normalize sexual and reproductive health care. One in four women will have an abortion in their lifetime. It is a normal part of reproductive health care. Yep. And it cannot, we have to stop othering abortion care mm-hmm. and we have to start normalizing it. Yep. I agree. And I am so excited to share the link for the campaign in the show notes. Last question. I know quite a few people that want to support Planned Parenthood and the work that you're doing. If they want to just give, how can they give and how can they donate in a way that uh, money will specifically go to helping people that do need access to abortion care? There's several ways. So first you can go to ppslr.org and go to the Regional Logistics Center website where you can give directly to patient navigation work and ensuring that patients have travel, lodging, and other financial aid resources. The other way you can give is to donate to abortion funds. There are abortion funds in all 50 states and abortion funds directly subsidize the abortion care because in many places there are private and public insurance bans. So the vast majority of people who need abortion access have to pay for it out of pocket and abortion funds do an amazing job offsetting those costs for people. That's wonderful. We'll include some links in the show notes to make it easy for people. So Bonnie, thank you so much for being here and thank you for the important work that you do. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Well, thanks for tuning into this episode of We Are Marketing Happy. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.